think there would be a Jimmy Buffett if there wasn't a New Orleans? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> I don't think there ever would have been. He's, his 50-year career took him around the world, but musical legend Jimmy Buffett always came back to New Orleans, even when the city needed him most. Good evening and thanks so much for watching. I'm Whitney Miller. Buffett passed away last night at the age of 76, and tonight those who knew him are remembering his deep love for our city. Here's Rachel Handley. Before he built an empire, Jimmy Buffett played for tips on the streets of New Orleans. His time here would end up shaping the Mississippi native's long career. So he fell in love with the city back then, and the city helped kind of give him the confidence to go out and do what he was going to do. After several albums, Buffett broke out with his hit Margaritaville in 1977. More followed, and as he rose to international fame, his tour bus came back to the city many times. It was his musical, cultural magnet uh, of his life to start out with. In 1989, Buffett played his first jazz fest. Over the years, he would return again and again, becoming the event's most reliable headliner. You know, he would always give uh, Jazz Fest a break on price, so they didn't have to pay, pay him when he was making it some other shows. He would always draw really big crowds. Then Katrina hit. Jazz Fest producer Quint Davis remembers the first festival after the storm. We were determined to put on a festival that year, even though there had been water in the streets a few months before. Jimmy Buffett was the first one he called. At first, Buffett was hesitant, saying he didn't want to strain the city's resources with big crowds. I said, Jimmy, we got to do this. I mean, we're doing this. We can't not do Jazz Fest. So he said, OK, and he came. Besides his character, Davis remembers Buffett's brilliance. It's what helped him turn his songs into a multi-million dollar brand. And in the early 90s, Buffett planted another flag in New Orleans. A Margaritaville restaurant opened at this spot on Decatur Street. It was there for more than 20 years until it closed in 2015. It was awesome. It was just a fun place to be, great food, always good drinks. Lifelong Parrot heads Beth and Brian Cross spent plenty of time there. And of course, we were sad all day. <laughs> He's touched fun times, sad times, everything. He's always kind of been there. That's especially true since Brian took his love of Buffett to the tattoo shop. The musician probably would have appreciated the humor. He was a well-known Saints fan. Early. He even sang the national anthem at what would become the NOLA no-call game. That year, he showed up to Jazz Fest dressed as a blind ref. Moments like that will keep him in the heart of the city that made him forever. Do you think there would be a Jimmy Buffett if there wasn't a New Orleans? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> I don't think there ever would have been. And funeral arrangements have not been announced yet, but we 